Welcome back, everybody, for another deep dive. Excited to be here. Today, we're going way back, like way, way back. We're talking billions of years to explore LUCA. LUCA. The last universal common ancestor. And you know what's even more wild? What's that? LUCA wasn't just some, like, basic blob chilling in the primordial soup. Oh, right. New research is saying it might have been way more complex than we thought possible. Yeah. It's really fascinating stuff. We're not even talking about the very first life form, right? Right. We're talking about the ancestor of everything alive today. So, like, everything. Right. Smallest bacteria to the tallest redwood, they all come from LUCA. So, okay, how do scientists even begin to study something that ancient? I mean, it's not like we've got fossils just lying around from that time. That's true. It's really like solving a puzzle, but you're missing like most of the pieces. Yeah. But they have this really clever way of looking back in time, you could say. Okay. They study the genes and proteins that everything alive today shares. Oh. And they're looking for those like common threads, those genetic blueprints that link us all the way back to Elysia. So it's kind of like a giant family tree, but instead of like your great grandparents, it's like the great, great, great you know, grandparent of everything. Exactly. But wait, evolution's messy, right? Mm. I mean, genes can change. They can get lost. They can swap between different organisms. Like, doesn't all of that make it basically impossible to be sure about LUCA? Yeah, you're totally right. That's that's a huge challenge. Like, imagine genes getting traded like cards between organisms. Yeah. That's what they call horizontal gene transfer. Okay. It can totally scramble the family history. Plus, sometimes genes just disappear over time. Poof. Gone. Just like that. It's like losing pieces of the puzzle. <laughs> oh, so how are scientists even supposed to untangle all that genetic chaos? Well, this new study that came out this year, they had a cool method. They built these like really fancy computer models to analyze thousands of genes from like tons of species. And that let them actually calculate the probability of a gene being present in LUCA, like cutting through all the noise. So like using statistics to separate the real LUCA signals from like random changes over, I don't know, billions of years. Exactly. So what did they find? I mean, was LUCA like a basic primitive life form or was there more to it? Well, what's really interesting is that LUCA seems to have been anything but simple. Really? Yeah. The study suggests that its genome could have been as big as some bacteria that are alive today. Wow. That's kind of mind blowing. So LUCA wasn't just like this barely surviving blob. It might have been like genetically pretty complex. That seems to be the case. And the genes themselves tell a pretty cool story. Like LUCA seems to have gotten its energy from hydrogen and carbon dioxide, which makes you think it was part of a pretty complex ecosystem, hmm. maybe interacting with other microbes and get this, even viruses. Wait, wait, wait. Viruses? <laughs> Those were around back then too. Oh yeah, for sure. In fact, the researchers found evidence of CRISPR genes in Lucida's genome. Hold on. CRISPR. That's that's like the gene editing technology that's super popular right now. Right? Yep, that's the one. So you're telling me that like billions of years ago, life was already battling viruses. Exactly. So CRISPR, it's like this defense system that bacteria use to target and destroy viral DNA. Oh, wow. And finding these genes in El Vizier will suggest that even way back then, Life was in this fight with viruses, which probably shaped how it evolved. That's wild. So it's not just about like a complex organism, but like a whole bustling ecosystem. Yeah. Viruses and all. Yeah, totally. And this whole idea of complexity, it really changes how we think about early life. You know, like one evolutionary biologist said, you know, a, a complex ecosystem just makes more sense. Makes sense to me. It's more realistic. It makes you wonder if LECA was already this sophisticated, like how long ago are we talking? When did this ancestor actually live? That's where things get even more interesting. They used a technique called molecular clock dating. Uh, and they estimated that LUCA lived around 4.2 billion years ago. 4.2 billion. But that's barely any time after Earth even formed? Are you saying life went from non-living matter to something like a modern cell that fast? That's what it looks like. And yeah. that time frame, well, it's caused a lot of debate among scientists. Some just think that 4.2 billion years ago is just too early. Okay, so let's unpack that. What makes them think LUCA couldn't have existed that early? I mean, think about it. The early Earth was kind of a wild place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a constant bombardment of asteroids and intense heat and like the whole environment was still kind of figuring itself out. Right. So some scientists think those conditions would made it almost impossible for life to evolve to be as complex as LUCA so quickly. I mean, yeah, that sounds pretty harsh. Right. Like it's hard to picture anything surviving that, let alone actually thriving. Yeah. But I mean, look, we're here today as 
Descendants of LUCA. Oh, that's true. Life found a way. That's a really good point. Yeah. And life is super resilient. Yeah. I mean, look at extremophiles living in like boiling hot springs or frozen glaciers. Yeah. Life exists in some of the most extreme places on Earth right now. Exactly. So it's definitely not impossible that LUCA or like its ancestors could adapt to all those early Earth challenges. Yeah. Maybe they found like little safe havens like deep sea hydrothermal vents or they figured out ways to deal with the heat and the impacts. It's like this huge cosmic survival game playing out on a planet. Yeah. And early life is just finding all these crazy ways to adapt and keep going. I like that. And it's important to remember that that 4.2 billion year estimate is just that an estimate. Right. It's based on what we know right now. Yeah. As we get better at dating things and as we look at more organisms, our idea of LUCA's timeline might change. Okay. So the mystery of LUCA's age isn't totally solved. Yeah. But even if the timeline is like mm -hmm. up for debate, yeah. another thing that's got scientists scratching their heads is the whole complexity thing. We've talked about how the study says LUCA was more sophisticated than we used to think. Mm -hmm. But there are some different opinions about that too, right? Oh yeah, for sure. While the size of LUCA's estimated genome and all the stuff in it is pretty impressive, some scientists are hesitant to say that means it was truly complex. Okay, what are they worried about? Well, if you remember bacteria and archaea, those are the two domains of life that came from LUCA. Yeah. They have some pretty big differences. Like their cell membranes are structured differently. Their DNA replication isn't the same. And they even handle genetic information in different ways. So if LUCA was as complex as this study suggests, wouldn't we see more similarities between its descendants? That's a great point. And that's exactly what some scientists are saying. They think that maybe LUCA was more of a transitional form. It was still kind of figuring out those core features that would later separate bacteria and archaea. So maybe LUCA had a bunch of genes, but its cellular machinery wasn't quite as, I don't know, modern is what we see now. That's one way to look at it. And we have to remember, we're working with limited information. Right. We're putting together LUCA's story from bits and pieces of genetic information that survived billions of years of evolution. It's like trying to build a dinosaur from just a few bones. We can make guesses, but there's always room for debate. It's like a giant evolutionary jigsaw puzzle, and we're still trying to find all the pieces and where they go. Exactly. Yeah. But even with all these different opinions, this research is really changing what we know about early life. For sure. And that's what's so cool about science. It's always changing. We're constantly questioning and refining and updating our models as we learn more. And these debates about all UCA, they just show how exciting and dynamic this field is. And they're pushing for more research, which will get us closer to the truth about our earliest ancestor. So what are some of the key areas researchers are focusing on to try and solve these mysteries? Where do we go from here? Well, one of the main things is developing even better dating methods to try and get a more accurate age for LUCA. That means looking at more genes from a wider range of organisms and making better statistical models that take into account all the weird stuff that was going on during early evolution. So like building a more powerful time machine to see further back into the past. Exactly. And on top of the dating thing, researchers are really digging into what specific genes that were probably in LUCA actually did. Mm -hmm. By figuring out how these genes worked and how they interacted with each other, we can get a way more detailed picture of LUCA's biology. So instead of just knowing that LUCA had a certain gene, we'll be able to figure out what that gene actually did and how it helped it survive and evolve. Right. It's like going from a blueprint to an actual working model of LUCA. Exactly. And that'll not only tell us more about LUCA itself, but also about how early life worked in general and how life on Earth became all the amazing organisms we see today. It's like we're not just tracing a family tree. We're figuring out the entire history of life on Earth starting from the very beginning. I like that. And with each new thing we discover, we get a better understanding of where we fit into all of this. It's wild to think about where all this research will take us. So after learning all these crazy details about LUCA, like its potential complexity, its ancient origins, and all the debates surrounding it, what can we say about how it changes our understanding of how life began? What does it all mean? I think it really makes us rethink some of our old ideas about early evolution, you know? Yeah, yeah. If LUCA was really as complex as the study is saying, and it was around that early in Earth's history, well, it means life might have gotten started and become really complex a lot faster than we thought. So, like, we might have totally underestimated how tough life is. Yeah. It was able to get a foothold and do well, even when early Earth was super harsh. 
It's definitely possible. And you know what that means. It changes how we think about life on other planets, too. Oh, yeah. If life could jump from non-living stuff to something kind of like a modern cell that fast here on Earth, it makes you think the same thing could happen in other places in the universe. Right. Maybe it's even more common than we thought. That's a really cool thought. Like, the universe is full of potential for life just waiting for the right conditions. Yeah. And it makes you wonder if we've been thinking too narrowly about what makes a planet habitable. Right. If... LUCA could make it in an environment that we thought was too rough for anything to live in. Maybe we need to open up our minds a little. Exactly. Maybe life can handle a lot more than we give it credit for. LUCA is really making us reconsider what life is and what it can do. Yeah. I mean, if it was here billions of years ago in conditions so different from today, what's stopping it from existing in even crazier environments? It opens up so many possibilities. We could be talking about life in the oceans, under the ice, on moons, or in the clouds of gas giants, or even just floating out there in space. Wow. And those are just the ones we can think of right now. Who knows what else is out there? It's amazing and a little scary to think about all the stuff we haven't discovered yet. Totally. LUCA is a good reminder that we're just getting started. We're still figuring out where life came from and how diverse it really is. There's so much more to learn. For sure. I can't wait to see what comes next in this whole field of research. Me too. It feels like every time we learn something new about LUCA, it just leads to more questions. Yeah. But for today, I think we've done a pretty good job. We've learned about LUCA's complexity, how old it is, and all the debate it's causing. What would you say is the most important thing we learned today? What should our listeners really take away from this? I think the biggest thing to remember is this. If life could not only survive, but really thrive on early Earth when it was so harsh, imagine what it could do in other places in the universe that seem impossible. I love that. It makes you think about how powerful life really is. It does. And to everyone listening, thanks for coming with us on this trip back in time to explore the origins of life. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of LECA. We'll see you next time. But until then, keep exploring. Keep asking questions and keep diving deep into all the wonders out there.